Thank you so much. Um, so again, my name is Jamie Lackey, and um, Helping Moms has been around three years, but I've been in this little service nonprofit industry for almost 20 years now. So I kind of draw from a little bit of all of that, and some lessons I learned getting started, and lessons I've learned over the last 20 years in partnering and working with um, organizations and companies and trying to get them to invest in um, our mission and the work we do. You know, it, it's really great if you come here and you see all these huge corporations that are getting involved and, and supporting all these organizations across the country, and you, we all want the big names. In Atlanta, we have Coke, we have UPS, we have Home Depot, we have Sun, we have Spanx, we have these huge things, and they're so hard to break into. And once you can break into them, it's fantastic. But, you know, waiting for that moment to get into one of those can take a while. And so one of the best pieces of advice that I got from a friend of mine who ran a nonprofit in Charlotte said, you know, start with some of these small businesses, the ones especially that you think have like growing potential because as they grow, if you're their nonprofit that they started with as you grow, their investment in you grows, you're, you grow together. And it was such a good piece of advice. And so I'm gonna just share a little bit with you um, about some of the women that we have worked with and some of the things we've done because I think we all go into businesses and, and want them to support us and want those big things we all need in the nonprofit world is money and that's kind of what we always start with but that's not always the right ask to start with um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of those things so how to find them we belong to Atlanta's huge and there's like a hundred million chamber of commerce that you can belong to one of the ones that we belong to is more local to us it's in Gwinnett um, and we attend a lot of their events they may cost 10 to 15 dollars but it's a really good networking opportunity and you meet other small business minded professionals um, you also can get a list of their directory to see like who is listed in your area um, and that's a really good place to start finding some really solid legitimate businesses if they're listed with their chamber of commerce they have a content they want to grow they want to have a presence in the community and that's why i usually start with them um, so it's, you know, I hate networking. I'm the worst at small talk. I think it's terrible, but I've made some great connections through it, and it's definitely worth looking into. Um, if you guys get local news publications, like we have this magazine called, like, Our Town that goes out, and you see all, like, the big ads, and those ads are for small businesses in your community. If they're, pay they're paying lots of money to put big ads in small publications, that tells me they have a marketing budget and they want to reach a lot of people. And if they want to reach a lot of people and I can give them social good, I can maybe like trump their investment in that small business, our town thing, and say, hey, if you support one of our events, I can get you in front of X number of people and you're also doing social good. So you're not just using your marketing money just for marketing. We can also use it for good as well. So that's usually a really good place to start because, again, they're already investing in a marketing strategy in a small publication. And so they probably have some money to invest in other places as well. And then another place that we look and we've learned a lot is Facebook groups. There's a lot of Facebook groups out there. Um, in Atlanta, like ours are, there's like one for, um, what's it called, Atlanta Moms Boss Network. And it's like a, a, a Facebook group of Atlanta women that are all running their own organizations. And there's several that have that different, like Atlanta Mom Squad. They're, they're all like business, small business owners, and they sometimes they're female, sometimes they're not. Um, and it's a really good place to join because you can post for free your stuff and we got a lot of activity and so that's a kind of just a good place to start um, looking for them so it's really important to create a mutually beneficial relationship i think a lot of people make a mistake and myself included of walking in and saying you know i have this great thing i'm a baby supply bank who doesn't want to give to babies just get invested with us and it's gonna be fantastic, but there has to be a mutually beneficial relationship. They're in this business, yes, they wanna help, and we all think people should help out of the goodness of their heart, and we all think they should, but they don't always. You need to show how it's a win-win for them. Um, talk about your reach um, with social media or your newsletter or your volunteer base. You know your demographics well, like who's following you, who's participating, so that you can go in and say, we have 2,000 followers on Facebook, they tend to be moms the age of this and this, and they're active in this type of you know response when we put something out. So they know that their market group matches your market group. It doesn't take a lot. It doesn't, you don't have to be a marketing professional. I've never had a marketing class in my life. I'm a social worker by training, but it's really easy data to mine off of Facebook and social media sites to find out who's following you and who your constituents are. So like, then you have a good product then to go out and confront them. So it's like, it looks like we market to the same type of people. This may be a good fit, and here's why. Um, if 
here seeking event sponsorship, have a good document that just says, and I have several that we use, um, you know, where your logo is going to go, how many impressions you think you're going to get. Post event, also do a follow up. We do a big event every year called the Ultimate Bachelor Viewing Party, um, where we bring cast members from the show The Bachelor and watch a show with people who pay tickets and come, and it's crazy and weird. And I don't even watch the show, so I don't even know who the people are, but it's just somebody just had to throw this for us. And one of the things that we did post event that got huge, huge results from our sponsors was we did social media impressions and you can get stuff like Hootsuite and other um, social media that you can find out if you have like a hashtag or an impression for that event, you can find out we had like 2 million um, impressions on like these sponsors' logos. So it was huge. It doesn't always have to be that big, but you can, if you have a lot of people at your events and you know they're all talking about it, there's ways that you can aggregate that data that's free, that's easy, that's really quick. There's several sites that will do that. Um, and it goes a long way for building those future relationships. It's like, wow, well, not only did the 300 people that attend the event hear about your product or your support of us, all these people were talking about it on social media. And so now you're reaching them further. And it goes, just goes a long way to building good relationships. Um, if you say you're going to do it, do it. Because <laughs> I've seen that happen before. And they're like, wait, you said that our logo, we had this amount, and we thought our logo was going to go here. And it didn't go there because there was a printing issue. Like, it's really important to do what you say you're going to do. So here are some unique ways that we have partnered. Uh, so money isn't always like that primary objective. Okay, it's my primary objective, it's not always my lead, right? So like my end result is how do I get them financially invested in us as we move forward, but it's not the first thing I usually ask for. Unless it's been something, a relationship that's been set up that they know I'm coming in to ask, that's not always usually my first, um, our first ask. For us, all of us, obviously donation drives. Okay, could have been all. Social media reach, um, guest speakers at events, volunteers, and activities at events. So I'm going to walk through each of these and how we've used them and the results that we've had from them. So social media reach, I skipped donation drives because I think we all are pretty well versed in how to do a donation drive. So I'm not going to spend if you want more information. We can certainly talk about that. Um, but social media reach. So we have these wonderful young people in our office that are, um, they're VISTAs, they're Volunteers in Service to America, and it's a program through the government, the Center Corporation for Center of National Community Service, and you can apply for this grant, and you can get essentially free help to you for a certain period of time that's full-time help, and you get to pick them and help them. So most of mine are like young college grads looking for experience in between work and graduate school or trying to build a resume. The government gives them a small living wage stipend. Um, and like the most of mine have been young and like understand social media, whereas I don't. So they had this great idea. They were like, it's going to be Women's History Month. Like, what if we pick some women that have been involved with us and we highlight them and we focus on them? Um, so we did four weeks. Instead of talking about women that had already made history, we were talking about women that were involved with us that were going to make history, that were currently making history in their community and their business field. Um, we had set, quite a set questions of interviews. We highlighted them one per week for the month of March. Um, each woman happened to be an entrepreneur uh, that worked specifically with women and or children. So the base was there for both of us. So their following and our following was the same. Um, and so it was just a natural fit. And they'd already been involved with us. And they were thrilled when we were like, can we feature you for all the great work you do, not only as a business leader, but in our in our work, in our community, how you uplifted us, and well, when people see themselves on social media or anywhere else, what do they do? They share it. So we were sharing, tagging them. They would then share. Then their friends would be like, oh, that's my friend Constance. Oh my gosh, look what this great article about her. I cannot tell you the social media reach we got out of that and, this, and the partnerships that came from that. Um, so I'm going to walk through that. Um, so each one had a, pro a profile on our webpage and on social media. So they had to land and come back to our webpage in order to read the story, which meant I was driving traffic to my webpage and about our mission, not just on social media. Um, so I'm going to quickly just show you what that looks like. For <coughs> so this is Constance Nixon. She's amazing. She used to live in Atlanta. She actually doesn't even live in Atlanta anymore. She lives in LA and is still one of my biggest supporters. But you can see there's a cute picture of her family. We talked about her company. Um, we asked her 
like what inspired you, what was the biggest issue you see concerning moms and babies today. If you could say one thing to mothers reading this, what would it be and why? Tell us about a woman who empowers you and why. Um, and so that was basically what we did. It was very easy, did not take much time on our end, which we all are looking for stuff that doesn't take a lot of time. And here's what happened. So we saw an increase. That social media post ended up being seen, I think, by over 3,000 people um, on one of our sites. But total, I think it ended up being over 5,000 people. She owns a company called Faltas. Faltas are like these Turkish towels that are really, really nice and beautiful and gorgeous. And um, now she started Falta for Falta. Literally after this, she wanted to get more involved and asked how. So now when you buy one, they donate a child size one to us. So now we have gotten over, in three months, we've gotten over 300 child size towels. Just huge parts, one of the things that we run out of all the time. But what I did was I highlighted her business. I talked about the work that how she created and started this business, you know, as part of her interview. So people were now learning that she had this business. So I was marketing for her, she was marketing for me, and we created this great um, partnership. Um, and what she's also done is because she was so impressed with the work that we had done, and just, she's connected us with so many other business leaders and other people in our community. She connected us with a friend of ours whose husband's an attorney at a major law firm and they did a car seat drive for us because we do the things other than diapers. And we had like 50 brand new car seats donated. Literally, the social media post probably took us all in all, when you look at it, it a couple hours to put together, right? We came up with the questions, we emailed her the questions, we got the picture, we posted it. And we have seen enormous benefits from this. Now, her friends and family also donate now financially to us. And so not only does Falta donate, her friends and family now are monthly givers. And they come because they all live in Atlanta. They come to the warehouse and they are a huge part. Her in-laws um, do wipes, do 20 packs of wipes a month, a reoccurring donation. Um, because we did a social media post and we talked about how amazing she was. So we did four women that way with similar results. I'm going to share some of these other women with me that we did it with. So events, so we're always like trying to plan like fundraising events and like what do we do when we do so much with kids, we want kids to be involved in our fundraising efforts too and how do you do that? I don't want to pay like, I'm a real big believer when I do events that they're, every ticket sale and everything we raise that night 100% needs to come back. I don't want ticket sales paying for the event. So I try to get sponsors and try to get people to donate stuff. So one of our big helpers um, is the Potty Rocker. She teaches people how to potty train in a super cool and fun way. She's a PhD in early childhood education and is super creative. And came up with this company. She's located in Atlanta, but they sell across the country. Um, so it's a startup. She doesn't have a lot of money right now. Like, really, she doesn't. Like, she's just a startup. She's getting going. But what she does is she comes to our fundraising events. Like, our, um, I'll show you a picture. We had an art expo this spring where kids were created artwork. Um, and we asked them to come. And so she had like several stations of fun activities, all related to diapers, because it was diapers. Even when the kids were older, they could do stuff like make a diaper baby and do just different things with diapers. She had all these activities. So I didn't pay to have like a professional entertainer, but the activity was amazing. The kids were hands on, and it was super helpful. It kept my costs down. Um, they also, for every potty, potty, potty training kit they sell, they donate a diaper to us, which is fantastic. Um, and they also go into our partner agencies and teach potty training um, at some of the shelters we work with. So it's really cool because we're trying to get people out of diapers as soon as possible. They're super stressed and she provides free potty training and resources to them. So it's another service that we can offer that isn't costing us a whole lot. Um, they participate in our Christmas party every year. We work with the Marcus Autism Center in Atlanta every year. We do a Christmas party. She comes and does arts and crafts for it. She has like said, so it's just amazing partnership but again I'm still putting her in front of people like we had over 200 people that attended our um, our fundraiser which was amazing but I was able to talk about potty rocker to a group of families that had small children about her great product so I'm able to put her in front of people she was also one of the, our women's networking folks her turns out her uncle has a foundation and they were one of our big financial sponsors at our event so again, all of these things happened. The finance and the money came later as a result of the relationship and the creative ways I looked to partner with them before asking for money um, and because we highlighted them. So it's been a really wonderful 
Um, wait, we also donate like really fun gift baskets, like like potty training gift baskets at our event. So like we have a women's event series called Thrive. There's no kids involved at all, but it's all females, and it's like a business networking, amazing panel speak, and we do like a giveaway. And so like we will raffle off or auction off baskets. And so again, I'm putting her product in front of two to three hundred business women who have small children most likely, and then I'm raising money off of. The basket she donates, all that's free. So that's how that kind of that snowball effect happens for us when we look for these folks. And again, as they grow, their investment in you grows because you're one of the first people they invested in as a nonprofit. You've helped them, they've helped us, and it's just a strong relationship that we're able to keep going. So that's our some of our fundraiser stuff. That's the potty record. It's fun. Um, kid, all kids like it. Um, even the ones that are potty trained, it's crazy the activities that she comes up with. So, um, but yeah, that's <coughs> one of our fundraisers, um, and you can see they're making just different things with it. I think her uncle's foundation, they gave us over three thousand dollars for that event. Again, all because we reached out and said, let's figure out a way to make this work where you don't have to give me money right now because you don't have it, but we have a common mission. You're talking about getting people out of diapers. I want to keep them in diapers, like you know, while they. For them, how do we make this work? And that's how all of this started for us. So yeah, so we've been able to provide fun and educational events. We've raised money with the nation, the gift baskets, our social media. When I talk about Nicole, because she um, is from the hometown that we're based in, and um, I live in Snellville, and she's a Snell, so she's known everybody for everyone. Our social media reach is insanity after that because everybody knows her and everybody shares and it's just a huge benefit and that's kind of one of the things I look for when I'm looking for smart business partners I'm looking at their social media and how they're using it and what their reach is because that pays dividends um, over the course of the relationship um, and again like she helps us keep our, our all of our event completely mission focused because she's getting people a lot of diapers we're putting them in. We all talk about diapers at every event we do, and so it's super mission focused. I don't have to go off mission to work with her. So here's a situation where we strictly went for financial support. Um, this is again another tend to go to female based businesses. It doesn't mean that's always what works, but for us, that's what's worked. There's lots of other wonderful ones. See Beautiful is a national company located in our town. Um, and I would really encourage you to check out seabeautiful.com. Um, they created a bracelet like this for us, and our logo was Stronger Together. And we sold together, they will have products that they sell that are uh, naturally made, good for the environment, and every product, every product that you sell, from clothing, jewelry, soaps, whatever it is, portions go back to a nonprofit. So they chose us as one of their giving initiatives. Um, and it was really cool. She had an enormous reach across the country. Um, so we raised over $6,000. And um, it was really easy to use mutual marketing efforts. Her base was so much larger than mine. The sales didn't come from our people. The sales came from theirs. So we then generated people that now know about our mission because she talked about us so much in what she does. And they do this all the time. She also has Sea Beautiful clubs across the country, not just in Atlanta. But this, so I can definitely link you guys. But their Sea Beautiful clubs are in schools, elementary schools and um, middle schools, and they're service project based, and they teach young girls to see beauty in the world. And so they do all different kinds of things. I can't tell you how many Sea Beautiful clubs have come to our warehouse and volunteered, and now their parents do drives for us. And it's just this crazy benefit for our art fundraiser. Um, it was insane. I don't recommend doing it because it was a lot of work. But we had kids submit their ideas of their original art on their vision of unity. Most had over 100 pieces of artwork that were submitted, and people were able to bid on them the night of the event. It was very successful. It was just a lot of work. Most of the pieces of artwork came from Sea Beautiful Clubs, not just in Atlanta, but from across the country. They were shipping them in because she talked about it, and the reach was so big. Um, and again, Lydia has such a huge following. The social media aspect of that again huge and the return on investment has been really large it's a relationship that i don't have to put a ton of effort into because you know she understands the work we're doing but it's it's so powerful and it's paid dividends again we highlighted her for our women's history month and that just like really solidified our relationship with them so volunteers we all know getting volunteers in is a great way to get money in as well um, 
Well Care is a private Medicaid company. Um, they donate, they came out and started doing volunteer events with us, having Well Care volunteer days. We have like over 40 volunteers twice a year that come to our warehouse. They now were a grant recipient for them. They give us over $12,000 a year. Um, but we started the relationship small. We started it with, yeah, we'd love to host you to come out. And they loved the work we did. And they said, well, we work in the healthcare field and we talk about babies and how do we help you? And that's how that relationship started was through that. Um, the Women's College Basketball Coaching Association, who knew they were in Atlanta? I'm from Knoxville, Tennessee. I just assumed they were Knoxville, Tennessee because anything Women's College Basketball with Pat Summit is in Tennessee. But um, they reached out to us and they said, can we come have a fun day there? And I was like, sure, of course. Um, they came and volunteered and I think brought like 2,000 pull-ups. Like we had no idea they were doing this. They had done this massive drive. And then they produced this incredible video of them, their, their service day, and they put it on their social media reach. They're the Women's College Basketball Coaching Association. So their coaching association is all over the country. So I'm like, what is happening on my Twitter feed? Like it's blowing up with all these women-based folks, sports. Um, wanting to know more about diaper needs. I'm like funneling questions and like trying to link them to diaper banks and other parts of the country. I'm like, what's happening? But all because they came into the volunteer event, I had no idea they were going to bring product. I had no idea they were going to produce a video and tag us in it and that we would get that kind of rebound from it. Um, so we really keep investing in that relationship and thanking them and talking to them regularly about other ways they can be involved. My whole office is decked out in orange and white because I'm a Tennessee girl and they were all big Pat Summit fans, obviously, so we had a lot of commonality. It was just a crazy, weird connection that we ended up making. And so um, I always look for those weird connections that you can kind of hook somebody in outside of your mission, but also personally. Um, so I really take a lot of time in trying to find out more about the people that own these businesses and what mutual relationships and things we have in common because when they kind of get to know you personally, they they want to invest even more. So I've learned that as a small startup, my brand isn't that strong yet, right? Like it's, I'm in Atlanta. We are fighting with some of the biggest health-based nonprofits in the world. Um, so it's hard when you don't have strong brand name. It's hard in our town. Um, so what I've had to do is find ways to make people want to invest in me which is tough because I'm not a natural salesperson, so relationships have been huge. So like I said, one of the women's on the Women's College Basketball Association worked with Pat Summit, and so I was like, I would love to talk to you more about that. I idolized her growing up, and now we're friends. Like, we know we have to say, we knew some of the same people in the same hometown, but I took 10 extra minutes to find out a little bit more about her and connect it. Um, the same with some of our other folks, Constance, who I didn't know at all before I started helping mamas, found out about us. I found out how I spent a lot of time with her initially just getting to know her and found we had, in a town as big as it was, we had some mutual connections that we didn't even know about. She was a nurse practitioner, one of my best friends was a nurse practitioner, and they kind of knew each other. And so like, I really take time to figure out who they are as people because then they know who I am as a person and they want to reinvest in, again, in me, not only as a company, because I'm desperately trying to get my brand out there, but they know who I am and that's been huge for us. Um, Turner Broadcasting, I spoke at an event and I was like, oh, they're never going to come like, to us. Like, I spoke at an event and um, the lady that's in charge of the corporate, social corporate responsibility came up to me and said, we had this big thing, it's called the Turner Broadcasting Gives Back Day. We sent all of our Turner people um, out into the community and we do events because you want to apply for it. I was like, sure. But the trick is you have to come to me because I like to do a lot of stuff on site. So it's Turner, so it's CNN and cartoon network and Twitter broadcasting and all that. And I was like, but I'm not going to come to you. And they really don't like projects that don't come to them. And they were like, why don't you want to bring all of my stuff? They're like, well, we'll pay for it. I'm like, uh-uh, that's a bad use of your money. I would don't want you to pay someone logistically to lug a bunch of diapers down to your office just so they can wrap them and do whatever it is we're going to have them do in your office. I want you to come to my office. Well, we don't do many of those. So I kind of had to be tough and say, it's really important that you come to us. We're not located right in the city. Nobody is located right in the city. It's too expensive to be right in the city, um, unless you're a trainer. And so I'm like 45 minutes outside the city. So they said, OK. And they came. Guess who came to my warehouse three weeks ago? Anderson Cooper's producer, the creator of Teen Titan, which is like one of my son's favorite shows. And they fell in love with the work we did because they came to my warehouse, they saw what I did, they could touch it, see it, visualize it. They had a great day and I'm really desperately, 
I knew nothing. We had no idea who was going to come. They don't tell you who's coming, but apparently all these people picked us because they lived out in our area. And Turner's like, not many people are going to come. Well, we have like 20 people because they all lived out around us. And they're like, oh, we don't have to go in town. This is great. Um, so we made those really significant relationships. One of the ladies that led the event was the first African-American um, editor at CNN. Like, she's huge. We had no idea. Like, she came to our warehouse three times. She's like the most chill, laid-back woman. She's phenomenal. So then we, like, get on and do research on social media. And she's, like, one of the biggest deals at CNN. We were like, oh, my God, we had no idea. Like, she has a whole bay at CNN. She's like, do you want to come see it? And I'm like, of course I want to come see it. So we're developing that relationship. But a lot of that was being okay and saying no and pushing back and saying, that doesn't benefit me. It doesn't benefit me to come to you. I need you to come to me. Um, I think it's going to save me money in the long run, and I think it's going to have a better impact. And they said, okay, it makes sense. You know, it made sense to them, and they made it happen. So now that's a really great relationship that going forward we're trying to nurture and grow. Um, but again, it was through a volunteer experience. We may not get financially anything from in the future, but it sure is a great media outlet to be attached to and know, have no about you. So that's how we kind of work those things. Um, Levi Strauss, like a local Levi Strauss store, came and like, hey, can we come volunteers? And they're like, yeah, sure. Two weeks later, they sent a check for $1,000. Like, I had no idea they were doing that. We were like, yeah, we can make that work. Um, fine. And so those are some of the ways we've turned these like financial, non-financial opportunities into financial opportunities. Of course, we've invited them back. And, Ask if they want to be a part of other things. So we just really develop those relationship. Um, have you guys ever had to create work for volunteers before? Yes. <laughs> we did that the other day. We had one group come in. It was Saturday. And we had this new person doing volunteers. My program coordinator's like, Demetria, I need you to have all the volunteers on Saturday take all the diapers off the shelf. She was like, you want them to do what? She's like, I want you to have them take them off the shelf. Because on Monday, we were having 50 students from one of the largest private schools in Atlanta come spend an entire day with us and we were like and they were like the tenth group we had in a row and we're like we're not gonna have work for you. So we're like we had them count our diapers and put them back on the shelf. It was I know it's not a great trick, but you know it worked. Um, at the end of that event on Monday, which feels like it was six years ago, it was only Monday, so we had fifty of them, they spent twenty five hundred dollars replenishing stuff in our warehouse. We had no idea. And now they've shared us all over their social media. Their kids loved it. We got like five new car seats, five new pack in place, tons of pull-ups, diapers, and wipes, because they were like, this is so great. We, you know, so those are the way like we really invest. If you try to make things happen and say yes, because we know it's more than just that initial touch point that we can build on the relationship and going forward. There's Wells Care. That may be Wells Fargo. We had Wells Fargo come out. Their local branches can be within the diaper drive. And uh, they raised a ton of diapers, came out, volunteered, and then donated money, too. Again, all things we had no idea were going to happen. And now they're one of our biggest pushers on social media. Their local branches push us all the time. They're being aware this week. They were retweeting and posting all, all of our stuff because we really worked hard to develop that relationship um, with them. So that's a bad slide. But this event, uh, so it's a created individual. Well, okay. This guy keeps coming back from welfare. He like literally comes back all the time with his wife and his kid. And, like every time his kid outgrows something, like he just swings by the office and drops stuff off. Like you know, amazing things like that happen. Financial support, donation to drives, attendance at events. These people have come. We had the Wells Fargo team when they were there. They were matting and framing our artwork for our event, like our service project day. And then they all got on the bought tickets and came to our event. You know, so we just—it's really crazy how these relationships happen and Wells, I'm not talking about Wells Fargo corporate, I can't get in the door at Wells Fargo corporate right now, but their local branches really believe in the work we're doing and they're right in my community and so they love that we give them an opportunity to have a big space to come and bring their branches to do stuff um, and so the same with Chick-fil-A. So Chick-fil-A is obviously located in Atlanta. I just now got a relationship with their corporate office but their local stores have been investing in us from day one. They host us for spirit night. So I really try to encourage people, you hear the big brand names, but if there's local offshoot branches, go there first. Like, let build that relationship. And then when you're in front of corporate, you're like, yeah, I had the marketing person from Chick-fil-A in the office the other day. I'm like, yeah. You know, Tom at, at St. Um, Scenic Highway, he's been doing this for us for years. And the guy at Stone Mountain, you know, the Daniels family, they've been involved with us doing this. And their ears, like, perk up. They're like, Oh, our stores are already engaged in the work that you guys are doing. We should probably now get on board. But that's how we found 
our ends um, with some of the larger corporations. So I told you about our Thrive events. Uh, we often use small business owners as guest speakers at our networking and women events because again, it puts them in front of an audience. So we, the last one was with Kat Cole, who was the CEO and president of Focus Brands Foods, was definitely our biggest speaker. And it was our smallest event because we did a breakfast at 60. Usually we had over 100 women attend. And so we're putting these women with these business and these products in front of other women who are going to buy their product and hear their story. But they talk about things that matter to them. So it gives them an opportunity to share their story and our product with a new audience. And it gives us a great speaker for an event where we raise money. So we sell tickets. Um, so like the, these two women are local entrepreneurs whose businesses have grown astronomically. Anita has a, pro, a program or a company called La Bella Bub. It's a maternity, so it's like Stitch Fix for maternity clothes. So she came to our first Thrive event. This woman is a local broadcaster who was pregnant at the time on WSB TV. They connected. Her clothes then were being worn on WSB TV by two of their media personalities and tweeted and, and um, tweeted about, talked about how great the company's grown, insane amounts. So then I had her back to speak at an event. And now she does a lot for us. So I mean, those are the way I build relationships. It's, I'm not going to see the end result right away, and that's frustrating. But I have to take the time to do that. So the connections are very, very amazing in how that happens. And Sarah Saunders was one of our panel speakers. Now she invites me to all of her female networking events, and we're hopefully trying to work something out with this huge company that she works for to do a launch because we do the same type of women's networking event but again it's because like we invested in them in a small way that put them in front of other groups um, that let them tell their story and tell our story in very powerful ways and make some really successful business um, relationships going for i mean cat call do you guys know focus brands it's cinnabon moe's schlotsky's any ands every satin thing that you could possibly <laughs> we're always owned by focus brands who is in atlanta Best speaker I've ever heard speak in my life. At 31, she was the president of Cinnabon <coughs> as a college dropout and 19-year-old Hooters waitress. So it's her background. She started Hooters franchises all over the country, all over the world without a college degree. She was amazing, was raised by a single mom. I hit her in a sweet spot when I asked we asked her to talk. She was eight months pregnant with her first baby, so she totally got diet to me. And what the stresses of being a new mom were. So she took time out of maternity leave to come and speak. Um, but a lot of these women were at this event that had invested in me. So I needed a good turnout because she's a huge speaker. We had, and these women that I had asked to be there and had believed in us bought tables and brought people. So that my event was well attended. She's an amazing speaker. So that's also why. But it's that relationship that we build and allow it to grow. So that's how we work small business relationships kind of to our advantage because Anita and um, Adriana have smaller companies, but they do have a budget, and they can buy tables, and they can bring people, and that's very powerful for us, and that's a huge thing. So that helped lead us to have a very successful event, all starting from our first one a year ago. She didn't have a panel. She was so amazing. We were like, no, we just want you. Thank you. Like, <laughs> she's like, do you want a panel? No. Mm -mm. Just you. Thank you. Um, here's how we think it works for us. It increases your base of support. It's a really organic way. From a social media perspective, if you're not a social media expert, which I am not, I do have younger people that are on staff with us that are a little bit better at it than I am, but it's a really great organic way to grow social media, which for us is our bread and butter. Anytime I put an ask out on Facebook or Instagram, the result is insane. What happens is these people that we've highlighted have driven so many people to our sites to like and follow us. That's why we're so successful with our social media and our reach. It's not pretty, it's not great, it's not the best stuff you'll see out there. But we have so many people that have, with influence, that have started following us because of those connections. So that's been huge for us. So it just organically increased my base of support without having, I didn't have to go out and find 2,000 people to follow us. I found five or six really great people to follow us. And so that's how that built. Um, it does lead, obviously, to the financial and kind donations. It increases our volunteer base. Uh, it's easier access than larger companies. Every company wants to give back. Every company wants to know for giving back. Social good, social entrepreneurship is kind of like the buzzword right now. So every company wants that aspect and they want to be able to access, they want the same things we do. 
they may want to get involved with a Boys and Girls Club, but they're going to get overlooked in a larger nonprofit situation because they're so small. I'm going to get looked in an over larger company, but when we work together, they have a great base, I have a great base, and we build together. So um, it really, really gives them access to something that they can feel good about, and it gives us access to something that's going to grow us. So that's why it's working more for us to do that right now. I'm not going to say no if anybody has any large connections with Carter's or Like We will not say no to them, but it is so much easier, and we get such a huge bang. And honestly, there's less red tape, and I get access to the decision makers. Like when you're going in through like the larger companies, like when I work with Turner, I'm working with Sydney, who's like their corporate responsibility, you know, responsibility manager. She doesn't really have a lot of say in like financially what gets done. And when I'm working with these smaller companies, I'm talking to the decision makers, the people that can decide where those dollars go. And they get to know me and I get to know them. Like I said, we've seen some of these, these small businesses grow very rapidly. And we are their nonprofit. We invested in them early. They invested in us early. And we're going to grow together. And that was it's a great relationship. Um, so we maintain it. Um, have a key player on your team, CEO, board member, update them periodically on what's happening. It doesn't, it doesn't even have to be like, hey, come out to this. And be like, hey, just wanted to let you know. Did you see our social media post? We had this great thing happen. We just wanted to tell you thanks for all you do. It comes from money on my board. Um, it doesn't have to be face to face, just like, hey, I wanted to give you a heads up that, you know, our CEO is being at the NDBN concert, like, we're, or conference, we're so excited about it, like, pay attention, you know, it's just something, because you've supported us, this has happened, you know, like, so make them feel really good about the work they do. Um, I meet people for lunch or coffee all the time, just to ask, not to ask for stuff for us, because I'm investing in who they are as people. So my event planner, the lady that does all my drive events, I don't even know why I don't have her on here, this is horrible. Nobody leave this room. I talked about Kathleen Morris and almost with extensively because she's amazing. She plans all my events for free. She came to me and said, I love this corporate event experience. I really believe in your mission. How do I help you? I'm like, well, here we go. So that's how Thrive was born. So we've gotten to be very good friends. The lady that plans our bachelor event for us, she does that for free. She's a like a writer, an industry writer for entertainment and beauty, and knows the producer for ABC. Um, didn't have any idea who she was before this. I'll tell you all about both their families. I can tell you everything about her kids. Kathleen just got a new nanny. It's going fabulously. But I go to want, I want to know who they are as people, like not just who they are as a business person. I really take time to invest in their relationships, and that has paid off dividends. I have dear friends now that I have made that also are investing in my company and, and mine and theirs. And so it's great to watch those things grow. So when I ask them out, I don't ask them to come talk about the next thing that they can do to help me. A lot of times I'm asking, how can I help you? You know, Kathleen, do you have someone that I can connect you with? And my friend Emily, like, what are you going to be talking about on your blog, beauty-related, that you want may want us to share or I can connect you with? How do I do that for you? So it does take a little bit of effort. But then they see that I'm truly invested in who they are. I'm not just asking for something. I'm giving back. So a lot of the women that were on that panel, um, I get, you know, we're in the baby world. So we get all like, these invitations to all these things. And I don't have babies anymore, so I don't go to like all these events. But I invite them to them. So the Butt Club and Beyond and the Honest Company came to Atlanta. I don't have children, small children. I'm not in the diapers world. That, that's what it was for. It's for me moms. So I invited three of those women who have products that are trying to launch and get off. I said, hey, I got this invite. Do you guys want to go as my guest? So I put them again without any effort in front of other people. So I look for that. I make intentional efforts to put them and connect them with other people. And it's really helped. Um, invite them to your fundraisers as your guest. Um, my folks are so nice. They always end up buying tickets. I'm like, no, don't buy a ticket. Just come. I just want you to come so I can say thank you. But they usually end up buying tickets. And I'm going to invite them to come. Thank them often, and this can and should be done through social media, personal handwritten thank you, emails, and phone calls. So when I get back and I can actually use a pen and a pencil again, I will write to the people that, I will write to Focus Brands, I will write to Cat Call, I will write to her assistant who coordinated everything while Cat was on, been out on maternity leave to make her show up at 8.30, you know, while she's on maternity leave and give a killer speech. Like, I will thank all of this. I've already done it through email the, the next day and a phone call, but I'll do it through handwritten. It was first thing we did that afternoon on social media, we thanked every single person that was involved. But then I go back and personally, I know Kat's the son, what her, her son's name is, I personally said, have so much fun, how much great time with 
baby ocean. This is like a, you know, this is the special time. I hope you enjoyed that. Like that means something when you know who they are personally and you connect with them. So they can, should be thanked often. Six months after an event, I need to email her and just remind her how awesome I thought she was because I want her to be engaged and still feel things. I mean, I ask her for anything for a long time to come, but I need to keep that relationship going and a quick thank you goes a long way. And make sure they know what impact you're having on your mission. So not only did I thank them the other day after the event, I told them how much money we had raised because of what they had done and what it was going to enable us to do. So not only did we raise you know, X amount of dollars, but this many children in Atlanta were going to be helped because of that. Um, they really, that's really important. Businesses show up all the time, but they don't always know the impact they're having. They know they may have donated $20,000 to your event, but they don't always get to hear what that end impact is. So always talking about that impact keeps them coming back for more. Okay, I think we made it through. Because <laughs> I, they told me like lunch was going to be ready. Um, and I was like, they're like, but we're going to go 10 minutes over. I'm like, I don't hold anybody from food. So <laughs> we do have like 10 minutes for questions. Yes, ma'am, I love your idea about looking in local publications to reach out to businesses. And I'm just curious, when you make that initial contact with someone who you're not, you know, you're not interacting with them face to face, how do you typically do that? Do you invite them for an event or like a volunteer event, or how do you reach out to people? It depends on like what we have going on at the time and what yeah, support you're trying to get. Like if I see something and I think, well, that might be a good relationship for the future, I will send them an email and say, I saw that you do X, Y, Z, and I try to sound like I'm really informed about what they do. Right. Attach my information to it. Say, I'd love to meet with you sometime and figure out ways that we can work together. And so. Before I say, you know, or when we were doing this bachelor event for the first time, like, that was a really great opportunity for to invite other sponsors, like, that weren't going to participate in that event, and you come as our guest. So that was a cool event. But that's typically what I do. I really want to meet them one-on-one -on -one before I have them come to something. Yeah. Um, and so that's how I'll, I'll word it. It's like, I see what you're doing. Like, not just that. Like, I, I, so I know what you're doing. I see that you are a female-based dentist and you do pediatric d dental work, and oh my gosh, I love that. My kids are 11 and 7. It's such an important thing. How can we work together? Because it's more personal. So that's how I typically do it. Yeah, so I'm going to build on that because um, I am not a marketing person. I don't want to be, not even remotely. So, yeah. you know, but building relationships is something that I love to do anyway. Right. So, um, but with our... With, and help me bridge the gap. Sure. So I know I need to connect with the small business owner, and I know that our population is maybe the same type of demographic, except the money part of it. So the people that you know we serve through the diaper bank are not financially going to be supporting most of the businesses. They're not able to shop in those businesses. So what kind of connect? Your volunteers and your donors. Okay. So that's what. So like there's a yoga studio, and most all of them do yoga. And they're like, hey, we, we kind of want to figure out how we can get involved, and like it seems like there's commonality there. Um, so I'm like, oh my gosh, we have all these volunteers. Like last year, we had 3,000 volunteer hours, and most of them were women. This blah blah blah. But this is a great way for us to kind of co work together. The other piece of that is that you don't always have to have the following. That's where you can rely heavily on your mission. So, like, say I didn't know, like I didn't have good data. I couldn't say I have X amount of volunteers. I can say, oh, wow, you serve women in this age range. The thing that I find connects us so much is our love for our children. And that's what we really try to connect people to is their love for children. And so we talk about our mission is trying to connect people who love their children want to help other people love our children the same way, regardless of demographic barrier. So we'd love to inspire the people in your company to connect with people who have the same love for their kids. And so we've just made a connection yeah. without having to show that. And that's good to know, because I mean, that's my nervous, you know, I'm yeah. trying to get into it. And I don't want to say, you know, just because you're a baby, you know, but that might be something. So I would say find ways that unify, so you take the barrier away. Like, you may not be too small, you may not have it, but like, darn it, we don't all love our kids the same way, and it does not matter what our associate is. Everybody gets that immediately. Yeah, thank you. How do you keep all of your contacts straight? What I mean by that is like, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, you, so you're going to contact them six months from now, you're going to Facebook them, you're going to message them. How the heck do you I do mess, I mess up a lot. I do. I totally mess up a lot. Um, but I try really hard. For the ones that I know that are going to have invested, I don't do it for everybody because everybody doesn't give me the effort that these people do. So they don't get that level. So the effort that someone gives me, I give back. Um, if I think there's potential to grow the effort, then I will put more into it. 
Um, so we have on our calendar, it will pop up, and I don't do it every time it pops up on our calendar, but it's, it's a, you know, sponsor media shout out day. And it's just, and, and we've picked different people throughout the year. So I'm like, oh, tomorrow coming up, I should probably think well here. Um, but it's planned out already, so I don't have to think about it. Like, I know I need to pick somebody for that day. Like, so we'll put it on our calendar. It alerts me ahead of time. I can quickly grow up, grab that picture and be like, oh, we had so much fun last, you know, six months ago with Walker. We have to come back soon. Great. You know, like, we can do that because I put it on the calendar. I have our smart list of people who know how to use technology better than I put that on my calendar. And we've made it a priority. You have to make it. There's so many things in their day that are a priority, but I had to make growth a priority. And so part of me investing in growth was having to back away from the diaper part of it and having someone else focus on that so I can focus on those things. Because if we want to grow, I have to invest in it. And so that's part of how I keep up with it is we have it on our calendar. And it's not like science. Sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, like, spring, I hadn't talked to Kathleen in forever. I'm like, Kathleen, are you drowning? Is it wedding season? I haven't heard from you. I feel terrible. Let's grab coffee soon. And she's like, oh, I'd love to do that. And then we got cat cold. So, like, it's not always something that's an exact science, but it's like, who have I not talked to you lately? Who have I not touched, reached out to, spoken to, engaged with? Who is that? You know, it's like once a month, spend that time and say, who have I not talked to this month? Who has not, who was giving a lot that wasn't? Where, where do I feel that? Volunteer coordinator that that he, you, you mentioned Levi, uh, Levi and having them, you know, inviting them back and then, you know, just what is your follow up with? So we have through our VISTA program where we have these fabulous people that have three year projects that have these books for three years. One of them is a volunteer person, and then my program coordinator oversees it. So right away she created infrastructure for us to do that. So she created a thank you a thank you card that we could send post. And then she will just remind herself, like she has a reminder set up to say, they were here a year ago, let's see if we can get on their service calendar again and make sure we she keeps that communication. So they come in, they all, we have them sign in and give us their email. Let's like, check all the boxes because the boxes say I can add you to my newsletter. And so then I add them to my newsletter and then they're constantly on any newsletter communication I send out. Any news, but then we have two levels of thank you that go out. We have the postcard, um, that I can sign and send out really quickly personally thanking them. And it was a big group in like the women's college basketball. We did all that stuff and we had no idea. We had like a little certificate that we can then send on their mail. Like, thank you. So it's just like, it's already made. You know, I just have to fill their name out on it, sign my name and send it. But they're already made, they're already printed. I don't have to think about it. Somebody else had a How large is your facility? 2,500 square feet. So we're kind of small um, and we need bigger space, but that's a problem for another day. You talked about your sponsorship form that you're sending to the. Are you able to share? That? Yeah, yeah, I can. I don't know how. Speak with all the jargon. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely share that. Um, I guess Chris, is my contact information going to be somewhere that they can reach out if I have documents I want to share? No, uh, yes, you want it to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was last year, of course. But yes, yeah, of course. it was last year, and I did grant talks for everybody. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yes. Because I've done this before, not just with this. It's like I'm not like some. I've done this for 20 years. So yes, yes. I have that. Yes, not because I figured it out in three years. I did not.